Hello and welcome to Jedi Geo Gaming. My name is Jedi and today I want to make a video in preparation of the Destiny 2 PC launch coming up. I will be specifically discussing key bindings and best practices for first person shooter games as well as include a few of my own tips that I've learned over the years of playing competitively in the first person shooter genre. This video is ideal for both new and veteran Destiny 2 players. I do want to mention that this footage was taken during the Destiny 2 beta, so some of the information might not be 100% accurate, but I'm certain that it'll be prevalent and still useful. Without further delay, let's begin. One of the biggest benefits of playing Destiny 2 on PC besides better graphics, field of view, and higher frames is that we can configure our key bindings to exactly our preference. If done correctly, this is essentially the same thing as buying a scuff or cinch gaming controller to maximize your gaming potential. To show you what I mean, let me freeze this gameplay for you and explain why it's important. In this video, you will note that when I revive my teammate, I'm still easily moving around and aiming. Note that I'm particularly moving right with my revive key binding that is not the default key. Although in this particular scenario it wasn't crucial as the round was over, in another situation like trials or simply activating the heavy weapon panel, not being able to fully move around, aim and shoot back at incoming enemy can be the difference between winning or losing the engagement. Now let me discuss what my key bindings are and my philosophy on them. First, let's begin with the default key bindings from Bungie. Here is a screenshot of the key bindings and the open beta. I doubt they'll change much. We see here the usual WASD keys which are used for movement and then the grenade, interact, and reload weapon keys. You will note from the example video, if I had kept the default interact key which is E, it would be much more difficult to strafe right while attempting to revive or activate a heavy panel, a heavy weapon panel. It's still possible, but my fingers would have to quickly reshuffle to move fluidly and it would be much more difficult. My philosophy on first person shooters is always to try to prevent your fingers from leaving the movement keys, which are often the WASD keys. I do this to continuously have me connected to my character's movement while simultaneously allow me to multitask abilities without hindering my ability to target my enemies or avoid incoming fire. One way I have been able to do this is by purchasing a mouse that has four buttons on its side. Although you can do this with the usual two that come with any standard mouse, I have found that the four that my mouse has has been perfect for most games especially first person shooter games here is a picture layout of my mouse the logitech g700s here are all the binded mice keys in this image you're going to note that i have binded the p key which i used as my interact key or revive key in destiny 2. by binding the interact key to my mouse as you can see, I will be easily able to revive or pick up ammo without hindering my movement or aiming. This is what I meant by correctly mapping your key bindings to give you that scuff or cinch gaming edge in certain pressure situations. Another useful key in Destiny to bind to your mouse is the melee key or class ability button, especially if you're playing the hunter where the class ability will allow you to dodge easier out of a bad engagement. Um, you're going to want to reach this button really quickly in a sticky situation. The moral of the story is to bind keys that are often used and needed in millisecond response time situations. Reducing your ability to move freely by activating this ability should be avoided at all costs. Now I understand that 4 buttons to play without my mouse, that's just not a common configuration at all. I myself been meaning to upgrade and I, I've been sticking with this mouse because I don't see any of them that have that. So most of you have 2 extra buttons. And so from my experience, I suggest considering choosing between Interact, Revive, or Class Ability, and maybe a melee attack. I want you to know that you can get creative with your mouse. I often use the scroll down wheel on my mouse as a melee attack. I find it very comfortable switching weapons during 1 through 5. So while mouse wheel is often reserved for switching weapons as it is default on Destiny 2, I actually find it best to use it to, uh, as a, to scroll down to do a melee attack or just another function altogether. I even use scroll up and scroll down for both different things. Uh, the reason I like it actually is my mouse, my finger's already on the trigger on the left mouse click. And so to melee quickly, you just have to drag it and pull really quickly. It's actually pretty quick to do. 
By the way, if anyone was wondering why I choose the letters O and P in both open and close brackets as binding keys to my mouse, the main reason is that in the past, most games didn't recognize four keys. So by binding my mouse keys to letters on the keyboard that I often don't touch while gaming, if you notice they're all in the uh, kind of top right, um, I'll always be able to map an action to these extra mouse buttons, which is really what I want to do. One last topic I want to discuss, in the Destiny 2 beta, we weren't allowed to map actions to the same key. For example, on consoles for Destiny, the revive and reload actions are actually the same button, but on the game itself, um, on the beta, it didn't allow you to do this. On Reddit, they posted some files that you can change, and you can actually make this change manually. I encourage everyone to do this in case it's not going to be possible once the game is released. This additionally will help map multiple commands to the same mouse keys if you only have two. I especially recommend this if you agree with my philosophy on mobility and first person shooters and always keeping your keys on the AWSD keys. I honestly would be shocked if Bungie didn't allow us to do this on the final launch of Destiny 2 as it's been kind of the standard for years on PC games but just in case it's not in the game. Feel free to watch the video below that I'm about to post next um, and it's going to show you how to complete this. Before I show this video, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I'm a father of two, I have a five year old and one month newborn. As you can imagine, something as simple as this video takes actually hours of my day. I was only able to do it, I'm doing it at one in the morning, it's really the only time I have. But I want you to know that I do it because I'm really passionate about gaming as an, and as an IT professional and gamer. I'd like to share my knowledge with the gaming community. I especially want to thank my friend Mtashed, who I've actually been friends with for a while, for inspiring me to attempt to do this, what he does with the community all the time. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, you go to this path. Okay, I'll put that in the description. And when you go to it, you open this file. You could open up with Notepad, if you already have Notepad, but uh, that's a little harder to see some of the variables. So I actually uh, installed Notepad Plus. It's just a free download. As you see, it's just a little bit easier to see. And here is where you can change some of those variables. Variables. You just simply change this variables here. If you notice, my interact is a bracket, um, and then the same one could be used for the air move, and it made it the same button. So if you have two buttons you want to make the same command, you can do that here. Um, and you can kind of customize everything. This is also where I changed my melee attack, for example, and I put a mouse wheel down. That's that's this that's mouse wheeled up. Uh, I'm sorry, mouse wheel down does the melee attack for me. It's it's really close, and I'll cover exactly why I, I set some of these settings this way. All right. Well, um, thanks for listening, and I will talk to you guys later.